Okay, so I'm going to start recording it now. Um, awesome. And if you haven't already located the chat feature, um, check the bottom of your screen. There's a little chat mm -hmm. bubble. So click on that and you'll see on the right a chat function pop up. Feel free to type your questions in there or there is a Q&A. We'd also like to be able to address very specific questions in there. I see there's already popping up. So um, I'm Sari Custer and I am the Chief Science Curiosity Officer at Arizona Science Mom, Center. My five-year-old uh, daughter is also... I, I'll go for it. I didn't hear you. Okay. Um, and Maverick, you want to go ahead and introduce of course. So I am Maverick. I am the Blue Crew Manager here at Arizona Science Center. So we are the team that when you get to come here and see all the cool demos and stuff, that's us. Um, so we've got another cool demo to show you guys basically today with a little more, a little more detailed and um, involved. So uh, it's going to be going to be a lot of fun. And while Maverick is going to do most of the talking after this, I'll be here to help moderate and check out your questions. So um, I'll be kind of on the sidelines, but um, I may pop in to help address those questions. So Maverick's going to keep an ear out for me so that he can really focus on showing you the cool stuff. All right. I'm going to put myself on mute and Maverick, I'll let you take it away. Sounds good. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. This is super exciting and I'm super excited to kind of get into this and show you all of this. So um, today our program is going to be about owls. If you haven't already guessed that, we have our little owl friend right here. Um, and I kind of want to start off with figuring out, so what what is an owl? So does anybody in the comments, can they tell me what what's an owl? It's a bird, a bird, exactly. So got really good answers there. So it is a bird. Does anybody know uh, specifically the family of bird that they might be in? They're a bird of prey. That is an awesome one. Nocturnal bird that is carnivorous. They're in a very similar family to eagles in terms of bird of prey. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. There you go, Carolyn. So these guys are raptors. And so basically that's gonna fall into a lot of our bird of prey categories. So that means that they are carnivorous, like some of you said, right? They like to fly down and they like to eat other animals. They don't really eat any veggies or anything like that. So this guy right here, this is an owl. Now, has anybody ever heard that owls can turn their heads all the way around? Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, right? Do you think that they can actually turn their heads all the way around full 360 degrees no they can't right if they did that their heads would probably fall right off and nobody wants that right so owls cannot turn their heads about 270 degrees which means they could turn their head almost all the way to look behind them on each side but they wouldn't be able to turn it all the way around right now does anybody know why they do that Oh, no, oh, cool. So there you go. That was a good one. Who's at mercy? Um, they do that to see. They do that to look for prey. Now, the reason they have to do that is because they, their eyes are a little bit different than our eyes. So if we want to look around, we can turn our heads a little bit, but we can also turn our eyes. So if I look to my left and turn my eyes to the left, I can still see that wall, even though my head isn't all the way turned. Owls can't do that. They can't turn their eyes like people can, right? So I have these super lovely owl goggles right here. And these help me see like an owl. So as I get this closer, you can see these right here. It's called binocular vision, right? So I can see straight ahead really well. But when I turn, I can't see anything to the side. I can't see anything like that. So I have to turn my whole head in order to see straight. Now, these are really, really, really good for focusing, right? Because a lot of you said that owls are predators, right? They're birds of prey. They need to focus in on things, especially some of you that said they were nocturnal, right? So they need to be able to find things when it's really dark, which means they need to focus. So if you want to try some owl vision at home, what you're going to do is some of you, I'm sure, have a couple pieces of paper, right? I have a couple pieces of paper right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll it up. You're going to roll each piece of paper up like this. And if you don't have paper, you can use like a paper towel roll or anything that's like a cylinder like this. So eventually you want to roll two pieces of paper up like this. I'm going to roll a second one up. So now we've got two pieces of paper that are little tunnels, basically, little tubes. And you're gonna put those over your eyes. 
Now I want you to try to look around your room and notice what you have to do. The only way you can see things is by turning your head. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time to kind of do that. And you'll notice that you're really, really good at focusing on things that are right in front of you, but everything else you have a really hard time seeing. Are you guys doing that? Can you, do you guys have any paper? Have you been trying that? Perfect. So if you didn't try that, if you didn't have any paper, that's totally fine. Um, you can do that a little bit later. That's an easy one to test out, um, but that's kind of why their heads can turn the way that they do. Now, another thing that owls do when they hunt compared to some other birds, there are some birds of prey that will dive in and they'll hunt kind of beak first and have really strong beaks. Owls have really strong feet. So when they land on their prey, they hold it down. They'll land right on top of it and they'll hold it down and they'll kill it like that rather than with their beaks. So they have super strong feet that can grab onto things really well, a lot better than a lot of other birds. Um, and then another thing, this is probably my favorite thing that owls do, is they can fly silently. They make no noise when they fly. It's pretty amazing. Now, what we have here is this fancy little owl wing that I definitely made. And it's very complex, obviously, but this is a little less complex than what an actual owl wing is, but when you flap it, it doesn't really make any noise. And that's kind of how owl wings work. Now, why might it be good for an owl to not make any noise while it flies? It made a little bit of noise, right? So I'm not, not quite as good as an owl, but there's little things that I might be able to do to make it, um, be quieter. Now sneak up on prey. That's awesome answer, Denise. Exactly. So they are really, really good marine. Awesome at catching its prey. So if they're sneaking up on things at night, they have to be quiet, right? And they have to be completely silent. So if they're flying around, if they make noise, they're not going to be able to catch their prey. So they Never. have very, very special feathers. Yes. Uh, so two questions that might be about the right time to ask them. Um, do what do owls eat? Do they eat smaller birds? And also, would you consider owls intelligent? They eat. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. So, what do owls eat? So, owls are predators, right? They eat just about anything that's smaller than them that they can catch. But mostly, what they're going to eat are going to be things like small mammals, so mice, moles, voles, um, little rodents, and stuff like that. But they will also eat a lot of small birds and. Um, basically anything that they can really catch and sneak up on, they'll also eat potentially some other owls. They have been known, depending on the type of owl, they will actually eat other owls. Someone said cats, sometimes they'll come across cats, they'll eat pigeons, um, yeah, and anything smaller that they can really find. Um, in terms of intelligence, they are fairly intelligent. So a lot of our birds of prey are fairly intelligent. Owls are um, up there on the birds of prey scale in terms of intelligence. Now they're not, um, they're not quite like, parrot level. Um, they're not going to be able to mimic speech and do different things like that, but they are very, very intelligent and they are very, very good hunters. So that was great questions that were asked there. <laughs> They'd have to be a really, really big owl to eat small humans, AJ, but I'm sure that if a long time ago there might have been some very, very large owls. Um, they are not, they're probably not as intelligent as dogs. There are certain breeds of dogs, um, but they're not as intelligent as dogs, but they are fairly smart. Um, but they can be trained to do a lot of things like fly to targets and different stuff like that. Um, said you have a hawk in your yard that gets in a fight with owls, that's true. So they typically fight over the same prey, right? So if there's an owl and there's a hawk in the same place, they're gonna argue over who gets to eat that food first, right? So they're gonna be fighting over that. That's kind of competition within your ecosystems there. So. Um, one thing I want to get into now, because this is kind of the fun part of it, so I want to do this now, and then we can actually work on possibly making our own owl wings later. But since we're on the topic of food, we are going to dissect some owl pellets. Now, before we get into that, does anybody know what an owl pellet is? Get nose. They definitely eat roof rats. Ooh. That's exactly what I was looking for right there. So a lot of people are saying poop, but a lot of people are saying vomit. So owl pellets look a lot like poop. However, they are not poop. They are actually a type of vomit. So 
birds in general, birds have kind of interesting digestive systems. So they can digest, which means they can kind of stomach and break down and poop out very specific things. They can do, they can break down stuff like the meat and the fat and the skin um, and different things like that. But in terms of the other stuff, they can't really break down bones and teeth and hair and all of that because they have what's called a gizzard. And when they eat something, it goes into their gizzard. And those gizzards are kind of where they break things down. A lot, they basically have a lot of sand and rocks and different stuff in there that helps them break it down because they don't have the digestive juices and enzymes that a lot of mammals have. So when they get in there, it breaks down the soft stuff, but the hard stuff gets left over because it can't really break it down. So what they do instead, they'll poop out all of the stuff that they digested, but everything that's left, they kind of condense into this tight little ball of like throw up and they vomit out these little owl pellets. So what's cool about owl pellets is you can actually kind of dive into them and you can learn a whole bunch about what the owl ate and you can typically find a lot of different things you can find bones you can find skulls you can find hair excuse me and all kind of things that the owl ate so we're going to dive into one or two of these owl pellets now i also have a really really cool sheet here and i'm going to kind of show you a little bit so this sheet right here let's see how well we can see this this is a little identification sheet. So these are some of the things that you can potentially find in owl pellets. Now, there's a few different types of skulls here. You've got skulls from a rodent, a shrew, a mole, and a bird, and as well as a bunch of different other body parts. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna see if we can find and identify which bones and stuff are in our specific owl pellets. Now, what's cool about dissecting owl pellets is you never know what's gonna be in these owl pellets. So, we're gonna have that there. Can you guys all see this plate pretty well? Perfect, I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Good, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw my gloves on real quick because it is vomit and I don't wanna be touching vomit without gloves on. And there's a few super basic di uh, dissection tools that you need for this. It's not as crazy as a lot of other dissections where you're super specific and needs scalpels and stuff, you need something like forceps. So little tweezers that you can kind of pick up a lot of the stuff that you're finding. And then a little toothpick that you can get in there and kind of help break it up. But I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap this first owl pellet. And as you can see, it looks like poop, right? Definitely looks like poop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break into this owl pellet right now. And I'm just gonna actually slide it open so I don't break anything because some of these little bones in here are very, very sensitive. And immediately when I broke into that, you can see some little bones in here. So we're gonna take some of these out and see if we can figure out what they are. Let me go ahead and slide some of this out. So it looks like we got lots of little bones. This is a cool one. This is one that we'll be able to look at on our identification sheet. So Maverick, there's a question here about what does this smell like? Does it smell like poop or what does it smell like? No, so um, it doesn't have much of a stench. Uh, luckily, it really is fairly odorless, surprisingly. Um, I'm sure when it first comes out, it's probably got a little more of a, like a throw up type of scent to it, uh, but it is fairly odorless. Oh, um, but. See, we're gonna look at this. So this bone right here, right? This looks, it's got a little bit of a rounded spot and that part on the end there. So my guess is it's a type of pelvic bone from some type of animal. So if we look at our sheet here and there's a little column right there with pelvic bones. Second one from the bottom there. Does it look like any of those? So this one right here is from a rodent. This one right here is from a shrew. This one right here is from a mole. And this one right here is from a bird. So I'm gonna pick that up and we're gonna see if we can kind of cross-reference it. And these bones are super delicate. So the little spot, the little part of it just kind of broke off. But we're gonna see if we can cross-reference this. 
and it can be very hard to identify. So obviously if this isn't your expertise, that's totally fine. That's part of the fun is trying to figure out what everything is in here. Now, because that little part of the bone broke off, it's a little extra hard to identify, but I'm gonna guess that it's either a rodent or a mole. Now, we're gonna keep diving into this because hopefully we'll find something that'll be much easier to identify and that is a skull. And I'm actually seeing potentially some little skull fragments in here already. So we might have a whole, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure we have a whole skull in here. So we're, yeah, gonna, yes. Uh, questions, a couple questions that you might be able to answer. How many bones does an owl pellet normally have? That is a good question. It all depends on how much they ate. So uh, typically, after an owl, you can find the, like if you're in the wild and you find an owl pellet, a lot of times it's gonna be right early in the morning because the owls were hunting all night and then threw it up in the morning from everything they ate. So if an owl ate a whole bunch of food that night, then there might be a whole bunch of bones in there. A lot of times it might just be the bones from one animal now, uh, but there's, it, it's a really good way for scientists and like ecologists to be able to tell how healthy or, the owls are, how much they're eating, what they're eating. So if there's a pellet that has a whole bunch of different foods in there and lots of bones, and that means the owl's probably eating pretty good. So Maverick, a couple other questions that are perfect for right now. Um, mm -hmm. Do you happen to know why we only dissect owl pellets and then how old are the pellets? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I feel like there was one other question that now I can't see. So I'll let you address those. Of course, yeah. So um, owl pellets, the reason, so just about every bird of prey, every raptor um, creates pellets. They do the same thing. However, owl pellets are typically larger than most other birds. Um, it's just kind of the, the digestion that they have. Owls have some of the worst actual digestion in terms of like different birds. So owl pellets are a very popular one because they are just typically larger and you can find a lot more stuff in there. Um, and in terms of how old they are, um, I don't specifically know how old these ones are. Um, they, can, they can last a decent amount of time because they are pretty um, compacted and congested into there. Ooh, this is a good one now. There's a little bit of a fragment of a skull there, but this is the whole skull basically. And this will be a really good one to look at our chart and try to identify. Now I'm trying to be extra careful because this skull is super duper brittle because this is from a very small animal but I'm not gonna tell you exactly what type of animal this is. We're gonna show you this and we're gonna see if you can look at our chart and figure out what type of animal this might be. Ooh, it's got some good old, ooh, there's another jaw in here. Look at that. This Never owl. Guys, really as you're cleaning that one up too, we noticed there's a lot of rodents listed, but uh, there's a couple questions about other things that owls mm -hmm. might eat. Do they eat reptiles? Yes. So one of the coolest things I ever found in an owl pellet was um, this vertebrae from a snake. So they will eat, like I said, they will eat just about anything that um, is small enough and they can catch it and eat it. Um, things like frogs and, you know, reptiles and stuff. So they're not super picky. Their most common ones are going to be um, small rodents um, and mammals and things along that, uh, that nature. But I know great horned owls, one of their favorite things to eat are skunks because owls actually don't have a sense of smell. A lot of birds don't have a very good sense of smell. So they don't really get bothered by the smell from a skunk. So great horned owls absolutely love to eat skunks. There's all this hair in here. There we go. Cool. So this is a pretty good point to kind of look at this skull here. So if you see that right here, this is a pretty good showing of that skull. Now you can see those teeth. You can see the general outline of the skull. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you look at that real quick. And then I am going to take out our little bone chart and we're gonna see if we can figure out what that was. So let's look at skulls here. So over here looks like we've got bird. Do we think that's a bird skull, yes or no? Seeing a lot of rodent, beaver, cool. So no on bird skull, cool. What about mole? 
think it's interesting that some people were saying beaver. That's an interesting clue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really interesting clue. And, I, and why do you think, for those of you that said beaver, why do you think beaver? So we think shrew or rodent. That's a really, really good identification. Um, so before we dive into that, we have another identification thing. If we're still not sure about what it is, we have this thing. It's on the back. I'm going to tilt the camera up a little bit so we can see it a little better. But this is called a dichotomous chart. Now, the way this works is you can look at very specific things and figure out what the animal is, hopefully. So it's got little things like you start at one and one A or B, three or fewer teeth on each side of its upper jaw or at least nine teeth on each side of its upper jaw. So if it had three or fewer teeth, we would go to two and then we'd answer the questions at number two. And that's how we can kind of break down and try to figure out what it is. So let's say it had three or fewer teeth on each of its upper jaw and had four biting teeth on each of its upper jaw then it would be a skull from a rabbit. If it didn't have any of those, then we would keep going and try to look. So this skull right here that I just showed you is for sure a skull from a rodent. And the way that we know that are these big old incisors. And some of you that said beaver and everything saw the coloration on those front teeth. So rodents are really, really cool. Their teeth, their incisors are always growing. The incisors are these these front teeth that kind of stick out. So they're, they're your front teeth when you go and bite into something and tear it off, like something like lettuce or whatever it is. Those incisors are those very front teeth. So rodents have really, really big front ones that are always growing, so they always need to chew. And they're coated in this kind of yellowy, uh, yellowy stuff to kind of help their teeth stay strong. But they always need to chew things so their teeth don't get too long. So this right here is definitely from a rodent, most likely a small mouse. Now, it doesn't have the other part of its jaw because this one right here doesn't really have a good illustration of the teeth. Um, well, it could actually. So I'm going to go ahead and actually break that lower part of the jaw off. So now we can look at this specific part of the jaw and you can see those teeth, right? So that's that lower jaw. So let's go ahead and look at this through our dichotomous key. So three or fewer teeth on each side of its upper jaw, or at least nine teeth on each side of its upper jaw. So this is the upper jaw. Let's see, does it look like it has three or fewer or does it look like it has nine? It looks like it has- a little lower, Maverick? We can actually- well, lower, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so it looks like it's got nine or more teeth, right? So we're gonna go over to question three. Now question three is, its skull is a length of 23 millimeters or less and brown teeth, or a skull that's a length of more than 23 millimeters and 44 teeth. So does it have brown teeth or 44 teeth? It's got those brown teeth, right? Those incisors that we were just kind of talking about. So if it's got the brown teeth, then the skull is potentially from a shrew. Ooh, that was a really good one. So according to our dichotomous key, this could potentially be from a shrew. But I think it's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at this. Let me look at this one more time because I question that. That's all right. So I'm pretty sure that's from a rodent. Our dichotomous key potentially says it's from a shrew. So we can start diving into this a little bit more and see what other bones we can find and maybe get a better answer. So this right here, I'm gonna take this out. This is a skull fragment. So this is part of the back of its skull here. This is probably a really good one to look at our identification chart. So this is another one of those pelvic bones, but it also has that hole where the leg bone would go into. So we can take a look at that and see what this looks like. So let's take a look at our chart here and look at some of those. Now, which one do we think it looks like? So this one right here is bird. This one right here is mole. The next one over is shrew. 
and this one over here is a rodent. What are we thinking? Seeing a lot of shrew, shrew, mole. mole. Yeah, so it's fun. This is, this is part of the fun because it can be kind of tough to fully identify what this is, so. Maverick, we've got a couple of questions on what is a shrew? What is a shrew? That's a really good question. So shrews are, um, they're similar to moles. They're a very small species of mammal, um, but they are kind of a, a branching point off of moles a little bit. They're a very small burrowing mammal. Um, there's a lot of different types of one. If any of you have ever seen the new Lion King movie, um, the new kind of like live action Lion King movie, there's actually an elephant shrew. When they first meet Timon and Pumbaa in that movie, there's a type of shrew. It's called an elephant shrew. It's got this weird nose and it kind of hangs out with them. I don't remember what its name is from the movie, but if you watch that movie again, you'll see an elephant shrew in that movie. So you can actually kind of get a better picture of what they are. Um, but yeah, they are a type of small mammal similar to more similar to a mole than they would be to like a rat or a mouse. Let's see, now there's a lot of rib bones in here that are the small thin bones, let me show you. So like this bone right here, that's a rib bone. There's all kinds of bones in here. So let's see if we can find any more super cool bones. Maverick, there's a question. Uh, can you find any organs in an owl pellet? Ooh, no, that's a very good question. So the owl pellets are just the things that the owl can't digest. So the organs and the muscles and all of that are actually things that can be digested by the owl. So you'll find, you'll find, you won't necessarily find the organs, you'll find what's left over after the owl ate them um, and digested them in owl poop, but you wouldn't find those in an owl pellet. So you wouldn't be able to go and look at the poop and see um, oh, this is a heart or liver or anything like that. It would just be kind of one mass of poop. But the, the pellets, you can only find the bones um, and the fur and the teeth and those kind of things because the owls can't digest those in their gizzards. So someone else would like to know if you can tell if it's a bird, can you tell what type of bird it is? Um, potentially, yeah. So um, if we were to find a bird um, skull or something in here, one of the best ways, I mean, if you really, really are good at identifying skulls, um, you could probably, I mean, you probably obviously be a little bit better at, um, you know, breaking it down because it can be kind of hard once it's just bones to tell exactly what it is. Um, but one way you'd be able to do that is you'd be able to know where you found the pellet. So if you found an actual pellet in the wild or you knew where the pellet came from, um, you'd be able to potentially look at where that was found and then you'd be able to look at birds in that area and try to figure out, okay, what bird might this be? Um, so it's always about kind of like cross-referencing with where the pellet is and what you find in there to see what type of animal it might be. Because a lot of bird, I mean, a pigeon skull and a dove skull and all of that are very, very similar. It can be very difficult to tell apart. Um, so that's one way that you'd definitely be able to do that. So I'm gonna pop open another owl pellet and see if we can find another skull of possibly a different animal. Now, like I said, that you never know what you're gonna find in these. So I cannot promise that it will not be another shrew or rodent or something, but um, maybe, just maybe, we can find something good in here. Maverick, would you say that uh, sh shrews are the most common? There's a question about what is the most common animal found in owl pellets? Definitely rodents. Um, oh, I already see a skull and I see some teeth in here that are, oh, there's, oh, this one might have had a few different rodents in here. So there's, if you can just see in this little part right here, I'm seeing four different incisors. So this one potentially ate really, really good. Um, but yeah, I think the most common things you're going to find are um, the, whatchamacallits, the rodents, because those are going to be what are most commonly found typically. Um, but that all depends on where, where you come from um, and where, where the owl pellet comes from. Do owls eat insects is another question. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, most of the time, no, that's going to be a little smaller than what their normal diet would they would have to eat a lot of insects to get enough sustenance to really survive. Um, but if there were some bigger insects that just happened to be around, then I'm sure an owl would try to take a stab at one of those. But in terms of smaller bugs, flies and things like that, owls aren't really going to eat those too often because it doesn't really benefit them too much. 
Okay, two more questions that are right on target here. Um, how long is the food in the owl's digestive system before it gets mm -hmm. regurgitated? And do they vomit more than once? And do they vomit more than one at a time, you mean? Uh, however you want to answer that. Do, do cool. they, yeah. how often do they, they regurgitate? Yeah, so uh, it takes them, uh, typically, I mean, they'll do it almost like maybe about six to eight hours to kind of digest that and break those things down um, and vomit it out. So typically they'll start hunting at night, vomit it out in the morning. Um, if something were to scare them or something happened that made them have to get rid of it quicker, um, then they could, they, they'll potentially throw that up and get rid of it really quickly. And when that happens, the pellets aren't as compact as these are. They're a little bigger and they're a little softer. Um, so they're a little harder to go through because it's kind of more mushy. Um, but typically the full digestion process is uh, kind of like six to eight hours from when they eat something to when they vomit it out. And in terms of actual vomiting the pellets, they only will vomit one pellet at a time. So if they ate something like this one, if it ate multiple um, things, it would digest all of that into, or not digest, but it would kind of compact all of that stuff that it couldn't digest into one pellet and then vomit all of that out together rather than... Um, rather than do two separate pellets or vomit two of them out at one time. This one's got some big old incisors. So you can see with the rodents, how I was talking about how those incisors keep growing. So if any of you have ever had a pet mouse or a pet rat or anything, that's why you want to give them chew toys so they can chew on them to, the, to keep their teeth down. Because if you don't, then this happens and their teeth start curving back in and then they could potentially hurt themselves. So this one, obviously was not chewing on many things and its teeth started overgrowing really hard and curving back in on itself. And this one very well could have possibly been killed by that. And then the owl came and swooped it up. So sometimes owls will do that and they'll be kind of scavengers and pick up whatever's left over. So that's another cool thing that you can figure out from this. And if you're a scientist and you're looking at that, you could be like, oh, so maybe the animals out here, uh, the rodents are having a hard time finding food and um, that could potentially be hurting them. So here's another lower jaw from probably that same animal, probably that same rodent there. Let's see if we can find any other chunks of stuff. Most commonly, you're gonna find a whole bunch of rib bones, so the little small rib bones in here, but you find hopefully a few other cool bones in here. So I think this is a whole nother skull right here, actually. Let's see, take our toothpick and break this down. And it's funny cause it does look like it would smell really bad but there's honestly zero smell. Like it is just, you wouldn't notice that anything is happening if you didn't actually see it. And I'm being a little extra careful cause I don't wanna break too much of this cause little skull fragments and stuff are breaking off. I'm seeing some teeth poking out of a weird spot right here too. So this skull is kind of strange. Oh, what is this? What is this? So, so this really quickly, while you're looking at that, I'm just gonna, there's several questions that come up about where do we get the pellets? And yeah. um, we get our pellets through uh, a couple different sources. Some are donated that we prep and others through science supply companies. So I'm just gonna cover that one for us all. Perfect. Yeah, and some of you that said you had owls um, like in your neighborhood or in your backyard and stuff like that, um, obviously don't go around picking up everything that looks like an owl pellet because a lot of that stuff might not be owl pellets, but if you get good at identifying what they look like, then that's something you could potentially do and you can go around and look to see if you can find wild owl pellets. And that would be a cool way to actually um, potentially look through those and see um, what might be living in your neighborhood, little rodents and stuff that might be living close to you. So this right here might be a different animal without the rest of the skull. But if you look at this, let's see, you can see some teeth here. Now these teeth look like they might be from something different. They might not be from either of our rodents here. So I kind of want to look through our pellet a little bit more. We'll probably give it another five minutes to kind of look through the pellets here and then we can get on to actually making our little owl wings. But let's look into our pellet and see if 
we can find some potential. I see another part of the jaw right here. So there's another section of lower jaw. Maverick, how many animals uh, do you think an owl could eat in a day? Like how many pellets mm -hmm. would an owl produce in 24 hours? Like that? So typically in a 24 hour span, they might produce two or so. I mean, they'll typically produce one per night um, and they're out hunting at night. So they might be able to produce two, possibly three, but most of the time it's gonna be one pellet um, per night, essentially one pellet per day. Um, so here's that lower jaw we just found. Now looking at that, that looks kind of like what we found earlier, but it's a little bit bigger. So this is probably another rodent skull here or possibly a shrew. I'm leaning more rodent though. Maverick, is there any way to tell what kind of pellet uh, these, or, or owl these pellets are from? Excuse me. That's a really good one. So these pellets are from barn owls. I know that, um, but it can be very hard to tell like what it's from just by, just by looking at the pellet specifically. So um, that's another thing, like if you were to find a pellet in the wild or anything, you would kind of look at what owls, like what species of owls live in that general area. Um, typically, a lot of people think you could do it by size, like, oh, if it's a bigger pellet, it might be a bigger owl. But kind of like what I was saying before, if they um, expelled that pellet before they were ready, before it was fully condensed, it might look bigger, but be from a small owl. So. Um, these are from barn owls. One of the most commonly used owl pellets you're going to find are from barn owls, just because barn owls are very common. Um, great horned owls are another one that they use a lot of, um, but it's typically going to be mostly barn owls. Um, but it's pretty hard to tell exactly what type of owl it is just from the pellet because they on, all the pellets honestly look the same. Someone wants to know if you've ever found a snake skull. I've never found a snake skull. Like I said, I found snake vertebrae, um, but I never found a snake skull, which makes me think that the owl probably caught the snake and probably kind of picked it apart a little bit before it, without swallowing it. So typically owls will swallow their prey whole, which is why it ends up like this. They don't, they can't chew, they don't have teeth. Um, but if it's a big snake that it caught that was a little bigger than, um, what it would be able to swallow. It could have possibly picked it apart and ate specific chunks and left a little bit of it left over, um, which is why there was no skull in there. But I personally have never found a snake skull. However, I'm sure that people have found snake skulls and owl pellets. By the way, this right here, this is a femur. So this is kind of that leg bone um, from one of those, one of those little rodents, whatever rodent was in there. Um, so this is kind of that upper leg bone. See if we can find any more cool ones. Looks like one of our teeth fell out from the curved one. So that's that curved tooth that fell out of that skull there. So that's a pretty wicked tooth. That would not be fun to have if you were that rodent. Let's see if we can find any more cool bones in here. There's a lot of, you're all, almost always gonna find bones in an owl pellet. That's one thing that's really cool about these is the only reason they expel them is because they ate something. So if you're, so if you're looking through owl, owl pellets, you're gonna find bones but you never, ever, ever know exactly what bones you're gonna find. And like, you know, these little pieces right here, these are skull fragments off the back of that other rodent that we were looking at. Looks like I may have accidentally broke his pelvis. I am sorry, little rodent guy. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like there's just a bunch of rib bones in here. A lot of small bones. So you can kind of see this mess of stuff right here, but it is just a whole plate of bones and fur and everything that the owl couldn't digest. But that is what those owl pellets are. Like I was saying before, it's just what the owls can't digest in their gizzard and they vomit it back out. So do we have any more questions about um, our owl pellet dissection before I kind of dive into our last little activity here and I'll let you make your own owl wing at home? All right, so I'm gonna go through a couple of the questions, cool. Maverick, and we'll see if we can answer them. Uh, can the pellets be used as a fertilizer to be put Ooh, in dirt? That's a really good question. I don't believe so because it's not um, it's 
not poop. It doesn't have the nutrients that like the, a lot of poop fertilizer would have, but I don't 100% know. That would be a good, some, good thing to research. Okay, there's a couple here that we already answered. Uh, do owls eat vertebrates and invertebrates? Uh, fish, mm -hmm. do owls eat fish? Have you ever seen um, fish? Potentially, yes. Yeah. So owls would definitely eat fish. Um, there, there have been cases that you can actually find videos on YouTube of an owl like swimming and stuff. So um, if they see a fish that's hanging out at the top of the water or something, they might dive in. Like I said, they have those strong feet. So kind of like an eagle, they could potentially fly in and grab a fish. Um, it's not a common prey item for them because they typically don't spend much time like diving into the water or anything. It's a lot easier for them to find small mammals, um, but they definitely would eat fish. All right, so do owls eat other owls? That's another question mm -hmm. here. Yeah, so they definitely would. Um, a large owl would eat a smaller owl. That is something that has happened in nature um, and does happen. A lot, of, a lot of birds and birds of prey and other animals like that will eat um, smaller animals of their same species. All right, so what's the biggest animal that may be found in a pellet? Mm, biggest animal that may be found in a pellet. Um, it's a, it definitely depends on the type of owl, but probably skunks. I think s skunks are definitely a big one that um, like those great horned owls will eat. I have seen a great horned owl take down a deer, a small deer. So there's potential that you could find deer bones um, in a like in one of these pellets, you probably wouldn't find a whole deer skull in one of these because they probably wouldn't have eaten that much of it. But I have seen that that is something that could they could possibly do a large owl. Um, the great gray owl is the largest species of owl. Um, and those those guys can get pretty big and they can take down some pretty large prey. But most of it's probably gonna be like a skunk is gonna be the most common in terms of like skulls and stuff you would find in a pellet. All right, so you also mentioned that the owl pellet doesn't really smell. Does their poop smell is mm -hmm. one of the questions. Yeah, so uh, their poop is, I mean, it's very similar to most bird poop. If you've ever, you know, seen bird poop, I'm sure a lot of you have seen bird poop everywhere. Um, it's similar, so it's got a little bit of a smell, but it's more of that like gross mushiness, um, it's less of a smell, more of a like blah nastiness because um, they put through a cloaca which is a it's a special hole basically it's like a everything everything goes all day. they do everything with it um, but like it's a little bit different so it's not like um, they don't have it like I said they don't have the digestive enzymes and everything that we have and a lot of those bacteria and stuff that like mammals have in their system is what makes a lot of that poop smell like our poop so owls and stuff don't have that so it's a little less smelly for them all right, does, uh, does an owl have multiple stomachs? Uh, no, they do not. They just have one. Can you find owl feathers in pellets? Uh, yeah, if, um, if an owl were to eat another owl, um, you would definitely be able to find some feathers and everything. They wouldn't be able to digest those feathers, so you could, you could find um, potentially other owl feathers in here. All right, we're going to go with just uh, probably one or two more here. What does their beak do to help them process their food? What does their beak do? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, so their beak in terms of processing the food, um, it doesn't do a lot like in, after the digestion, but if you'll notice, and I'll show you our little owl friend here. Um, so if you'll notice, this guy is a hoot by the way. Um, that beak there, it's kind of curved down a little bit to help with tearing. So um, like I said, they don't really, they don't chew but they'll tear chunks off. So the beaks are designed to kind of work like a can opener and rip into prey and rip chunks off really easily so they can swallow that whole. But after they swallow it, the beak doesn't do much. They don't chew or anything like that. Awesome, so I'm gonna put a stop on, uh, thank you to all of you who asked some questions. I know we have a last piece of this activity um, before we get going. So Maverick, I'll turn it over to you. Sounds good. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these gloves off. You probably don't need these anymore. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our own little owl wings. So um, if you have, and I'll show you the template, it's very, very simple, but I'll show you the little template so you can screen grab this or do whatever. We could possibly post a link to it. I think I have the actual attachment. 
But basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a little rainbow like this. So forget that the popsicle sticks are there. You're going to cut out a little rainbow. Um, so you'll cut out a little bit on the bottom and you'll cut out over the top so it makes a cute little rainbow. And you're going to have that line right in the middle of it. So we're going to go ahead and go through that right now. So Maverick, while you're cutting, there's another question about how long can owls live? And it's come up a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, if you happen to know lifespan of owls. Yeah, of course. So um, the oldest owl that I have ever personally met, is, he was about 38 years old. Um, typically owl lifespans, a lot of birds can live for a decent amount of time. Um, owls can get into their 30s. Um, some species can live a little bit longer, some of the larger species, um, but 30s is going to be pretty old for an owl. They're not going to live as long as something like a macaw or some of the parrots. Um, but yeah, probably 30s, potentially 40s. And you know, as you're cutting out the making the wing, there was a question earlier for those bigger species. How big can owl wingspans get? Yeah, of course. So um, an owl's wingspan, the largest owl's wingspan, I want to say is about nine feet. If I'm trying to think of exact numbers, don't quote me on that, but I want to say it's somewhere in that nine foot range. I think great horned owls wingspans can be about um, six to seven feet. Uh, but yeah, in terms of all the way across, there are some very, very large owls out there. Eurasian eagle owls are a really, really cool one. Those are pretty big. Um, great horned owls are going to be one of the bigger ones you're going to find out here in North America and in Arizona specifically. Are there any other really common owls here in Arizona that we should be on the lookout for? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the barn owls are another one that um, there are a decent amount of them here in Arizona. Um, another one that's super duper cute are these little things called burrowing owls. And those guys are very small and they actually live on the ground. They're called burrowing owls, so they dig underground. And a lot of times you can find them out in places, uh, a lot of like open fields. Um, there's a, a lot of farmland, they have them. Um, and there's these cute little owls that dig underground. They're probably about uh, maybe half the size of this guy. So they're probably about like six to eight inches tall at most. Um, and they're super cute. And one fun little fact about them, one thing that they do when, they, when, uh, when they're scared, when they see a predator, is they will actually get down real low. They'll spread their wings out because they look kind of the same coloration as a rattlesnake and they'll put their wings out and they'll shake really fast and try to make a rattle like a rattlesnake and try to scare something off by pretending that they are a rattlesnake. Um, and then yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this real quick. So the next step you're going to do once you've got that cut out is if you have um, pipe cleaners at home. But if you don't have pipe cleaner, you can use anything to kind of stick it through um, these specific uh, blah, blah, blah. Popsicle sticks are the words that I'm looking for because words are very hard. Um, and we pre cut holes into these. You can use other things. You can use any, and you can kind of experiment and see what makes a quiet wing. So this isn't going to be the guaranteed way to make a quiet wing. So you can add different materials. You can add feathers if you have feathers. Um, but you're gonna take about four or five of these and you're gonna put them all together and line the holes up as much as possible. And you're gonna try to go ahead and put that popsicle stick or put the pipe cleaner through the popsicle sticks to hold them together. And these are going to act as if you've ever seen a wing. There's all the little kind of parts of the wing, the little bony parts that stick, stick out through the wing that hold it in place that allow it to kind of flap open. So with this feather right here, imagine that the popsicle six are this part of the wing, this inner part that holds the feathers there. So we're going to put those through. and you get to have that all nice and spread out. Then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down here. So then what we're gonna do is you're gonna first off, tie these off so that they stay there. 
and then you'll spread them out. And the reason we have this middle line here is to kind of give you a guide, but you can put them wherever you want. And you're gonna spread those out across the wing and then you can either glue or you can tape, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. I'm gonna tape because we don't really have glue time. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this eventually. I'm totally, I can, I can totally function in tape. I'm totally fine. There we go. So we're just gonna tape that onto there. And tape that onto there. There. Tape that onto there. So the next step, because if you have a wing, if you ever see an owl or any bird and it's got a wing, it's not just flat like this, right? A lot of times it's gonna have little ridges. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to mimic the feathers is fold in between all your popsicle sticks or whatever you use in place of your popsicle sticks right in between all your feathers. You can fold those in, crinkle those up, so you make a nice little fan. And voila, you have an owl wing. Now, if I flap this, it's pretty quiet, right? But if I go fast enough, eventually it makes a little bit of noise. But you can experiment with different ways to possibly make it make less noise, right? So um, what you can do is you can do things like cut some slits in there to make it seem like feathers. Because feathers at the end, right? There's all those slits. So makes it even quieter. I can flap even faster and it doesn't really make much noise. And there's a lot of different things. You could try different materials. You could put actual feathers. You could put felt. You can put all kinds of different stuff on here, but see if you can make the best owl, owl wing, owl fan that you can. It's kind of like a snowflake, right, Jeff? So every wing is a little bit different, right? So there is no right or wrong answer, um, but it's a really cool way to see if you can be quiet and make a quiet wing like an owl. Um, so that is all of the activities that I have for you today. Um, do we have any more questions or anything like that? I'm checking our last round here. There's a couple questions. We answered most of these. Um, Jasmine, I've been here since August. So I've been here for about, however many months is that? Seven, seven months, I think, if I'm doing my head math correctly. Let's see. How fast can an owl fly? Ooh, how fast can an owl fly? That's a really good question. Um, so I'm trying to think of the exact answer. I don't have an exact speed for you. I'm trying to pull it out of my, I know it's in my memory banks, but I do not have an exact answer for you. Um, yeah, I don't want to give you a wrong answer, so I'm not going to say um, I don't 100% remember. How heavy is an owl is a really good question. So one cool thing about birds is they are, very, very light, even, even the big ones, because their bones are actually hollow to allow them to fly. So um, basically like great horned owls are one of the biggest ones you're gonna find here. They typically don't weigh any more than like 15 pounds at most. And now we're getting into the puns and, and jokes again, which is awesome. Um, so I think it's probably about time to wrap this up. I know it looks like everybody's having a, a good time. That was awesome, Maverick, to be able to dig through those. Thank you. That uh, was so much fun. Thank you guys for letting me. That was a ton of fun. Yes. So um, we hope you all enjoyed this experience today. So even though we are all at home, safe social distancing doesn't mean we don't have to actually be social and it doesn't mean the science has to stop. So um, we look forward to continuing to host our awesome members like you in more Monday events in the weeks moving forward. Um, so check your member emails for the nothing topic, which of course is escaping me a moment. Uh, I believe it's an eye, well, is an eyeball optics. No, it's all right if Matt doesn't know either, but check your email for the topics. And I was trying to think if the next one is an optics 
demonstration. Uh, the, yes, yeah, so the next one we will be doing optics and it's going to be a cow-eyed dissection. So if you want to check out more really amazing uh, members only exclusive experiences like this, uh, join us for another web webinar where we go through a cow eyeball dissection and talk about the optics of an eye. So a uh, round of applause. Everybody give Maverick all the kudos in the chat. Thanks for your great question. Thank you. Uh, you're too <laughs> kind. Oh, thanks. You can continue to check out our live demonstrations. We've got early childhood opportunities on Facebook Live. 30 every morning, Monday through Saturday, live activities and demonstration on Facebook Live at 1 p.m. every day, Monday through Saturday, and including some extra content on Sundays too, and even more science at home on our website at azscience.org. So again, thank you all for joining us today, and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye! Bye, everyone. Thank you.